Ready? Okay, I'll just let you ask questions. I'm ready to get on the plane. Gary, did, was Dan able to do anything this week, and what is his prognosis for Saturday? Yeah, he was involved a little bit, and uh, my expectations is that uh, he'll play. I'm sure that's Danny's at this point, so we'll see. There's a little bit of time to go, but uh, I expect him to play. If, if something happens in the game and he tweaks that ankle again, what's the emergency break glass in case of war plan? Um, you know, it really depends on a lot of different things. You know, possibility of Ray Ball moving inside, Dallas moving inside. Um, it's your time to play, it's your time to play. So you've got to you got to be able to snap the ball to keep playing. So if that means Michael Dieter plays, then Michael Dieter plays. So you would you would leave that as a, an emergency possibility? Yeah, it's either that or walk off the field and not finish the championship game. So we'll have to definitely play him. And that's so at some point, you know, that's uh, that's the way it goes. It's not ideally. Yeah. That's not what we wanted. We would have played him a long time ago. But uh, Michael's on board. Uh, his family's completely on board and excited about the opportunity for him to play. Quite frankly, they're. Uh, Dad was pretty fired up when I talked to him today and said I thought this kid might have a chance to play. So what a great attitude they have. It's like uh, have these guys postseason practice as opposed to a normal. Is there, is there a different feel? No, not really. No, it's uh, business as usual. We're happy to be practicing, obviously. Uh, glad we get to spend one more week with these kids, that's for sure. But just glad to be out here and competing. But, yeah, we've been in kind of a, a round-robin single elimination here for a long time. So these kids are... I don't know, just like they have for really the whole month of November. There are guys on this team that have been involved in this game for the season. Not at all. No, we'll, uh, games to games, stadium to stadium, playing a good team. Uh, you know, it's, these guys are excited to be playing, you know, that much. So, again, the key is in these games is to just make sure you don't get too excited. You hold the emotions to where they need to be and execute. Ohio State is a very good team. Wisconsin's a very good team. They're both going to tee off. They're experienced enough now to go get prepared to play regardless of the situation. Is it good for your team's health is overall, despite some stuff on the offensive line? Are you guys mostly healthy going on this game? Oh, you know, I don't think anybody can say they're mostly healthy walking into the 13th game of the year. So uh, we've been fortunate this year. I've tried to be very careful with them in the last month in practice. So the coach isn't quite frankly so the kids. So everybody's beat up. It's never an excuse late in the year. We're beat up, we're banged up, we're trying to practice in the right way, but still get prepared. So you can tell me we can sit back and say hey, we're gonna have uh, you know, ten days off before we play again and kind of take it, but you know, no such luck in the area. So but we're health wise we're playing twelve games in a very long season and what we went through in the last month, I would say we're mature. On Monday, you, you were optimistic that Clement would give you more. Yeah. Is, is that still a point? Yeah. I feel good he looked in practice. Good. good. Very good. Yeah. Fresh legs, too? Yeah. He better. Yeah, he, should, he, should, <laughs> he should have very fresh legs and, and be ready to roll. But he uh, he looks good, So uh, just like he did last week. But you know, a week of, of healing again does nothing but help. No contact in practice, right? No contact in practice. Right? No, he banged around with those guys. Whatever the contact was down there, yeah, he was. He didn't have on a green shirt or anything. He was okay. ready to roll for him. From what I saw, I don't think he had a great shot. Yeah, didn't look like it to me. If, if you do end up having to use Michael Dieter, have you ever been in a situation like that before where late in the year you had to say, son, we need you? Yep, yeah, quite a few times, actually. Really? Yeah, okay. I mean, it, uh, if, if you're in that position and you're on the travel team, um, he's down there, he's never taken one rep of prep squad team all year okay. long. Um, if you look back and say some of the young men that are in a position to base, play special teams in the skill areas, they mm -hmm. get a few more reps, the offensive linemen are really afforded that luxury, if you will. Um, they're not going to run down on kickoff or what have you. So it's it's kind of the role that they have to accept. Do I like it? Again, no. Yeah. But where we were and our numbers, the way they were out of balance, you know, he is he's an emergency. We're not just going to say, hey, he's the next best guy. That's not what we're saying. We're yeah. saying in order to be able to continue and give ourselves a chance to win the game, and Michael is He's, he's great with that responsibility. Mm -hmm. He understands it. And if it does happen, he'll have a red shirt year. It's a clause for him, an insurance policy, if you will. And if he doesn't, then he'll have three more years to play in the Big Ten and be a starting offensive lineman. That's still a pretty dang good spot to be in. Has he taken the bulk of the reps with the ones this week with Dan kind of being? Really, on Tuesday and Wednesday, those young kids typically take the bulk of the reps through practice. Okay. And so he's probably got. Uh, a few more than he normally had. Okay. Uh, but he's 
it'll be ready to go. Walker Woods will be ready to go. Hopefully Ray will be ready to go. It's going to be, you know, just see how the game rolls. And hopefully Dan's ready and we don't have to cross that bridge. But if we do, at least we prepared ourselves and we're all prepared. If he jogs out on the field, no one's going to be like, oh my goodness, what are we doing? So. Trent still out there as well? Yes. yes. You would hope so. I talked to him about that Tuesday in practice. So here we go. We made a big time catch, a big time moment. And I, it has to help you because you've been in the environment. It's one thing to do it in practice. It's another thing to do it in a, a big time game, in a big time moment. Um, it's got to do more. Just this has to boost your confidence. I'm sure it myself as a person. I know it. I'm sure it did for Rob. It seemed to. So I told him now we expect him to take that. So where we go. Is this the best game line you'll face this year? Um, see who's playing the bowl game. But to this point, yeah, I would say that overall. I would say they're probably from, uh, top six. They're probably the best defensive line that we've played. We've played some very talented defensive lines along the way. Uh, but from one to six, it's probably the most talented. I know you're asking about bowls are early in the week and understand this yeah. because of his numbers, but those tackles are pretty stout. They are. So what, what do you see from them when you look on tape? Can they get up the field as well? Yeah, you know, I, I, what I've seen is I've seen them grow through the last year, even okay. since we played them. You know, we got ready for them and played them, and they were fairly young. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've really watched 63 grow and yeah. blossom. I apologize for not remembering his name at this point, but there's so many of them, it's hard to remember their names. Uh, Bose is who he is, but those inside kids are, have been very good pass rushers. They're stout and physical against the run. They roll them through enough to give them a, a good rest, and they are a, they're a very talented defensive front. There's been a lot of coaching changes this week and uh, you mentioned Monday that the challenge of keeping your assistance this time of year are any of your guys being pursued that you know of currently uh, not that I know of so and I'm sure they would uh, tell me if they were being pursued but, but they will um, you don't have the year that we had and put up the numbers that you have on offense and defense without your coaches being pursued so the challenge will be to obviously keep them here and it's just a matter of time until they start getting phone calls so uh, they're happy they like where they are but you know, we'll see what happens as we move forward. Anything else? We good? Okay. Thank Thanks you guys. Appreciate it.